Celtic mythology talks about a powerful enchantress named Ceridwen, who has immense power to create portions that will do almost everything one can imagine. The sorceress possessed not only great power, but also wisdom and intelligence. The legends also talk about her special cauldron, which she uses to make powerful potions. Unlike in most tales, where the role of a witch is portrayed as a wicked and a twisted character, Celtic mythology refers to Ceridwen as a white witch, who is a witch who uses her powers to do good to people. So in some myths, Ceridwen is referred to as a goddess. She is worshipped as the keeper of the sacred cauldron, as well as the goddess of transformation, inspiration, and rebirth. The name Ceridwen is believed to be originated from the combination of the two words Kerid and Gwen or Gwen. Kerid can be translated as poetry or song. The word Gwen most likely means woman. But if derived from Gwen, it may be interpreted as fair, blessed or white. Some also argue the first part of the name is derived from the word Keru which has the Celtic meaning cauldron. Stories do not explain the origin of Ceridwen and how she came about to perform powerful cauldron magic. But the legends do claim she was married to Tejid Voil, who is a warrior as in some legends. The first appearance of the sorceress could be seen in the legends of the Bran the Blessed, the giant king of Britain. Once, Ceridwen and her husband emerged from a lake in Ireland and disguised themselves as giants. The men who witnessed the emergence feared the couple, thinking that the lake is some sort of an entrance to the underworld. They feared Ceridwen and her husband, thinking they are from the underworld. So the Irish people banished them from their land. As they escaped, they encountered Bran the Blessed, who is the king of Britain at that time. Bran offered them safety and shelter in his land. In gratitude, Ceridwen offered the king a magical cauldron that has the power to resurrect the dead. Some legends state that Bran was aware of the cauldron and offered to help the couple in return for the magical cauldron. The land was at peace for a long time after receiving the cauldron, so Bran found no particular use of it. At his sister Branwen's wedding, Bran gifted the cauldron to her husband Mathelwalk, the Irish king. Another variation of the story explains that the Irish king Mathelwalk asked for the hand of his sister Branwen in marriage, thus forging an alliance between the two islands. Bran was delighted by the offer and agreed to the union. Ethnisian, who is a half-brother of Bran and Branwen, was angered by this arrangement because his opinion was not sought by any of the kings. So he brutally murdered Mathelwalker's horses just before the wedding. Mathelwalk was deeply offended by the act. So in order to make it up to him, Bran offered his magic cauldron that can restore the dead to life. Pleased with the gift, Mathelwalk and Branwen sail back to Ireland to reign. Due to the influence of Ephnisian, a massive war broke out between the two kings, and Bran understood that Mathelwalk was using the cauldron against him. So Bran reached the cauldron as a fallen Irish warrior, and destroyed the cauldron from within, sacrificing himself in the process. Because of this cauldron and its ability to restore life, Ceridwen was soon identified as the goddess of the underworld and rebirth. The well-known tale of Ceridwen is the story related to the Cauldron of Knowledge. Sometime later, Ceridwen gave birth to twins, a girl and a boy. The daughter Kriwi was bright and beautiful, but the son Morfran, also known as Ifagdu, had a hideous look. Regardless, the Enchantress loved both her children equally, but she was worried about her son Morfran as he grew older. So Ceridwen decided to make him wise, so his looks wouldn't matter. She made a potion in her magical cauldron to grant the gift of wisdom and great knowledge. The portion had to be boiled for a year and a day, and the first three drops from the cauldron would grant great wisdom and knowledge to the consumer, 
and the rest of the portion turned to poison. Caradwin assigned Gwion, a young boy, to stir the portion for a year. Gwion carried his duties for a year, and on the final day, the three hot drops spilled onto Gwion's thumb as he stirred. The hot drops burned him, so he instinctively put his thumb in his mouth. He soon realized that he has just consumed the three drops of great wisdom and knowledge. Gwion knew Caridwen would not be pleased to know what happened, since the three drops were intended for her son. So he fled. Soon after realizing what had happened, Caridwen chased after Gwion. The portion not only granted him great wisdom, but also the power to shapeshift. So he turned himself into a hare, thinking he would escape the goddess. But Caridwen was wiser, and turned herself to a hound, to hunt down Gwion. To escape the hound, he became a fish, and jumped into a river, but she transformed into an otter. When Gwion turned into a bird, she became a hawk. Finally, he turned into a single grain of corn. Caridwen then became a hen, and with her powers as a goddess, she was able to find Gwion without an effort and ate the grain. Because of the powers given to Gwion by the portion, he was not killed as Caridwen swallowed him, but was able to place himself in the goddess's womb. When she realized she was pregnant, Caridwen knew that it must be with Gwion. She vowed to kill the infant when he was born. However, when Gwion was born, she couldn't bring herself to kill the child. Instead, she placed him inside a leather skin bag and threw him into the ocean. Surprisingly, the child survived and was rescued by a prince named Elfin. The infant still had the knowledge he gained from the portion and grew to become the legendary storyteller named Talison. The goddess is associated with many animals she transformed into in this story. That is, Caridwen is often associated with the hound, otter, hawk, and hen. Those who are followers of the Enchantress, especially white witches and wizards, tend to care for these animals and to keep them. Also, the goddess is believed to take the form of a white sow. A white sow represents fertility and creative force, which are aspects attributed to the goddess. Caridwen is also associated with the Dark Moon, so she is also referred to as the Goddess of the Dark Moon. The moon's different phases are considered different shapeshifts of the Goddess. The New Moon is believed to symbolize the beginning. Witches and wizards who are followers of Caridwen prefer to make many of their portions during the time of the New Moon. Caridwen is believed to appear before humans in the form of an animal or an old woman in need of help. She would test the person by asking for help. Judging by the way the person responds, the goddess would grant them prosperity or misfortune. What do you think of this story? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much my Patreon and subscribers for your amazing support. If haven't already and if you'd like to support my channel, you can do so by being a Patreon, a YouTube member, and a subscriber. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you again in another story to tell.